are two main thrusts, and this is very, it's good that we're getting right into that because there are two main things that are necessary in order to get at the functions of the mind if you want to understand them, if you want to replicate them, whatever it is, which is the connectome, the architecture, the structure, and what we now call the activity map. So this is the this new thing that, that Obama's administration has now also decided is important to do. It's kind of like between 2008 and 2012, the big new thing was connectomics, the connectome. Mm -hmm. And there's been some really good results there because a lot of work has been put into the tools and into research. It became a hot topic. And then now, this year, finally, the hot topic has become the activity map of the brain. So a really high resolution mapping of what are all these neurons doing, what kinds of response functions do they have. Because when you want to define a system, if you really want to build a model of a system, this is where it gets into what I tried to describe in some of my talks. You want to break it down into little pieces that are more easy to describe. And when you've done that by looking at the architecture and getting all the little pieces out, then you still need to figure out what are all these little pieces doing and am I modeling them correctly. If you want to model that correctly, you need reference you need reference activity that you can compare it with. And that's what the activity map is about. So that's really the second part of it. Okay, so the activity map, would that equate to the qualia? I'm in the subjective extent, so I can understand. Um, any device or any mechanism in the world, there's usually, it is exposed to something. There's some kind of environment it's in, there's an input it's receiving, and then it does something and it produces an output. The brain, just like any other organism in our body, like all of our cells, like everything we have, does the same thing. All the neurons are sitting there and they're receiving an input, they're producing an output. Our mind, it's something that's receiving a bunch of input from the environment, as well as from our memories. So there's experiential input, there's input from what's happening around of us, and then it produces some output. It's doing something to it, it's processing it, it's an information processor. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. So... We can describe in mechanistic terms what's going on. What is this information processing? That's what we call system identification. That's that process where you need to then map to, uh, in terms of functions. Now, qualia, to me, as, as a neuroscientist anyway, it, it always seems not that mysterious because um, as you're being exposed to colors and to things that you're seeing, your brain is beginning to set up connections that make some kind of sense that it, so that it can do something useful with that. Like, for example, stop at a traffic light. So you're setting up all kinds of useful connections. This is the synapses that are forming in your brain as you're learning. And the way that you're learning it, because you're being exposed to things in a way that's slightly different than someone else. No one else is having exactly the same experiences that you are. And also, of course, you're differing from everyone else slightly from birth because your brain was set up differently as it developed before receiving a lot of input. And so obviously these connections are going to be different, but it'll still be something useful. And there is a correspondence you can make because we do interact with the same external world. So there are signals that are the same and the stuff that we eventually do with it, like stopping at a traffic light is also similar. So there's a similarity on the input and there's a similarity on the output, but in between, we may have set it up differently. There are a lot of different ways to build functions that work. And so it's not surprising that there would be some difference in the way those are built and then also how things are experienced. The difference but to is, me, uh, that's just the, the, the precise setup of that synaptic learning and the way in, those, in which those have become different because we experience different things. Sure. And, and does that equate to our personality, our persona, like what we individualize as ourself is the differences in those connections that have set up through experience? They're set I, up through I different think processing. So. And um, so does that where your techniques and technologies go through to map that personality to to capture that, so to speak? Uh, yes, actually, or at least this is my 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 thought is sure, that yeah. if you can map that, then indeed you're capturing what is going on there? You're capturing your experience and your expression, which is basically you.